Hola amigos y amigas, welcome to the Fogo channel. I'm your host, Captain Ron. Guess what? It's Cinco de Mayo time. We're bringing you something special today. Smoke shotgun shells, but not just any style, Fiesta style smoke shotgun shells. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a combination of ground beef and ground sausage. We're gonna combine that with some cream cheese, some taco flavored cheddar cheese, some drained rotel, and gonna combine it all, stuff these manicotti shells, wrap them in bacon, and smoke them on the big green egg. To finish it off, a little bit of enchilada sauce and some more taco cheese across the top for that melty, ooey gooey goodness. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna assemble our filling, and it's an easy, easy filling. It all starts with this. One pound of ground beef. Boom. One pound of sweet Italian sausage. You can use different kinds, but I like to use sweet Italian. You can use hot if you wanna add a little spice to it, okay? I got one half of a block of cream cheese. Now this is softened, this has been sitting out all morning. If you got cold cream cheese, throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds or so and soften up. But yeah, softened cream cheese. Now for cheese, Okay, I, I like to use different kinds of cheeses. This is actually a taco flavored cheese already. Now this, kind of, this is one bag. I'm gonna use about three quarters of this bag in the mixture. We gotta save a little for later. And lastly, we've got a taco seasoning packet. Now I know they've got different cooking directions on here and all like that, but we're just gonna add it right in here. You don't have to add the water. If you don't want it quite so strong flavored, add a little less, it's up to you. Have fun with it, be loco. The last thing we're gonna put in our mixture is this can of Rotel. I'm gonna give you a pro tip. Everybody pay attention, because I did this a couple weeks ago and people lost their minds and gave me a comment. Everybody probably uses their can opener like this, right? No, that's not how it was designed. It's designed to be used sideways like this, okay? You put it like this, clip it, then simply turn. Now what happens is that as you do this, okay, it takes the top off and you know what you don't have now? No sharp edges, okay? You got your can open, everything here. Now, we're just gonna go ahead and drain this. You wanna kinda push down and get as much of the juice out as possible. We don't want all those juices. We just want the good vegetables. As you can see, like I said, it's all diced tomatoes and green chilies in here. It's got a beautiful flavor. This is gonna add our really, kind of our, I don't wanna say Mexican flavoring, but that, that, that specific flavoring to it. So we're gonna add this into our mixture here. See, look at all that juice that drained out of there. Okay, we don't want that. Now what we're gonna do is just kind of fold this into itself. Yeah, now it's gonna combine it all beautifully too. Just keep folding it inside of itself. You'll see like here, you see big white spots. You don't want that. You wanna make sure it's all blended beautifully or excellente. All right, but here, now that's looking pretty good. We look like we're pretty well mixed up. Everything's pretty well combined. Now if you can find manicotti shells, okay, this is what you're looking for. They come just like this, they're, they're fluted, they're tubes of pasta. This is what they look like. You can see why they call them shotgun shells. If you've ever seen one get shot out of a shotgun, that looks exactly like that. They're a hard pasta. A lot of people like to parboil them, okay, get them softened up a little bit first. What's gonna happen is all the fats from the sausage and the beef and the liquids, when this cooks and the bacon on the outside is actually gonna soften the shells, but you gotta make sure that it's fully covered. Fully, fully covered. If not, parboil them a little bit. Now, when it comes to stuffing, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Okay, here's one. You just take a handful of it, put it kind of in the palm of your hand, and just sort of keep stuffing it like this. Keep pushing it down into your palm of your hand, okay? This is kind of, really, this is the way that I find the best to do it. A lot of people do it different ways. I'm gonna show you another way in just a minute, but let's get one done. What you don't wanna do in this situation is start on one end and then go, oh, I gotta get the other side and go here, nope. What'll happen is you'll get a little air pocket in here. You don't want air in the middle, right? You wanna eat this thing, you want meat and cheese all the way through. So if you wanna help it along, stick your finger in there and kinda of do that, but you're just forcing it up in there. Keep doing it until it starts coming out the other end. Didn't sound right. And now it's starting to pop out the other end. Okay, you can see here. So I'm just gonna sort of smooth it out like that. And there we go, that is one stuffed shotgun shell. Now I wanna show you another method. It's the piping bag method. A lot of people say this is easier. I don't know, I've never had the greatest luck with it. What you do is you get it all into the bag, get all the air out and push it down into a corner. Take your kitchen scissors, cut the little corner off the bag, just like that. And we're gonna pipe this mixture down into our manicotti shells. So take one like this, hold this like this and simply squeeze. Again, we've got a perfectly stuffed shotgun shell. Personally, I find it a lot easier the way I do it the first way. Just take it and just keep stuffing it in there. So that's how I'm gonna continue to do it. If you wanna use the piping bag method, now you know both ways to do it. There is the last one. All right, got a whole tray full of them here. Look how beautiful they are. But there's one more step to do. Just when you thought the flavor explosion was already done, no sir and no ma'am, we're gonna kick it up. Bacon, because bacon makes everything better. 
All right, we're gonna wrap each one in bacon. Make sure you're starting at the very edge and you wanna make sure every single square inch of shell is covered here. All right, because what happens is that if it's not covered like that, I've got two pieces going here. If it's not covered 100%, you're gonna have hard spots on your shells. Nobody, and I do mean nobody, wants hard spots on the shells. And there we have it, the final one, all wrapped in bacon, okay? All set. There's only one thing left to do now. We want to let these set up for a while while we light the grill. It's going to take a little while. So I'm going to take these. You know what I'm off to now? My favorite part, to the refrigerator. Let's talk about our grill setup for a minute while those are basking in the refrigerator softening up. Let's talk about what we're going to do here. Okay, you can do these on any kind of grill or smoker. For the big green egg, we're going to use an indirect setup. I mean, we're going to have our convector in here. I got the convector basket in here along with the top grate. So it's going to sit right in there. We're gonna cook indirect at 350 degrees. We want that bacon to get nice and crispy, so cooking a little bit hotter is gonna help that. Nobody wants rubbery bacon at all. So, we're gonna go ahead and get my blazer ball, gonna get my starters and get a fire started in here. We've already got some charcoal from last time, so we got a head start on it. All right, blazing balls burning, we got fire starters going. I happen to have an open bag from last time I cooked. It's still good, obviously. So I had some charcoal in there, but I want to add a little more. I want to make sure that we have enough. I'm going to use the black bag because we're going for a shorter smoke. This is only about an hour, hour and a half. We're not actually smoking, we're just cooking indirect. So I'm just going to fill it with the rest of this bag. Now that we got our fire burning, we get our deflector and everything right back in here so we can cook indirect. We're gonna close it up. We're gonna heat this stuff up with the grill. Also, you notice that I put aluminum foil on the convector. The reason being, there's gonna be a lot of dripping with this, a lot of dripping. I don't like to get that convector all covered with grease. So what I do is I cover it with aluminum foil. It protects it, throw it away next time, start over. Now, while the grill's heating up, let's talk about something. I'm making these for Cinco de Mayo, kind of in a Mexican style with Mexican flair flavors. You can make shotgun shells in any flavor you want. Make them like jalapeno poppers, whatever you want, whatever you choose. But experiment, go crazy, make it your own. Make it your own flavor combination. It doesn't have to be what we're doing here, okay? This is just your basis. So, I wanna see what you're doing. If you're making something cool, please tag me. I wanna see it. And I have returned from the refrigerator. <laughs> That's right, so we got our beautiful shotgun shells here. They've been sitting in the refrigerator for about 45 minutes while this has been heating up. Right now, it's just over 300 degrees. We're gonna bring it to 325, 350, but we are ready to put these suckers on. On here and then all you can do now you can put them on a wire rack and put them on here if you want all you do just lay them right on the grate again this is why I have the aluminum foil on the convector because I don't want all this baking grease and everything dripping down on there so load them on here and let them go these should take somewhere about an hour or so to cook now we let them sleep for about an hour buenos no chase all right, amigos and amigas, we are at that point now where it's saucing time. Now, you see all this smoke? Before I talked about why I had um, aluminum foil on the plate setter, or on the convector as they call it now, it's because all of this smoke would be grease dripping down onto there. Now, if you look at these, they're beautiful. The bacon is crispy. They're nice and done. The, shell, the shells are soft underneath there. They are perfect. So we're going to sauce them. Normally, we would go to barbecue sauce, but we're doing something totally different for Cinco de Mayo. We're going to put them right into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this down with duck fat spray so that nothing sticks and load our shotgun shells right in here. I love that duck fat spray. The natural progression of this now would be to coat these in barbecue sauce, but no, we're not doing that. Like I said, we're going Mexican style. So what I have is enchilada sauce, red enchilada sauce. I'm just gonna pour this over the whole entire thing, make sure they're nice and coated. We've got a little basting brush here. We're gonna make sure every single inch of these is covered with sauce. And now, an artist at work. And the last thing left to do is cover them up with cheese and get this nice and cheese all melted and put it back on the egg. Oh man, I can't wait to dig into these. Okay, and there is the last of the cheese. Only one thing left to do, put it back on the egg to get this cheese melted up. So what I did is I cranked open the vents so we get the heat going good, probably 350, 400 degrees. It's gonna roll, we're gonna get that cheese nice and melted, nice and brown, so it's gonna be delicious. Now I'm gonna have a little special topping to put right across the top of it and we are going to feast like champions. We're gonna pull these off. These have been about 20 minutes. That was the fastest 20 minutes of your life, wasn't it? Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Cheese is all melted, even beginning to brown and bubble on top. That sauce, nice and bubbly and thickened up. My favorite time of the video. You know what time it is. Okay, so this is what we're supposed to look like. Okay, got your beautiful filling on the inside, got that gorgeous fluted um, manicotti shell, the bacon and then the cheese on top, that sauce, only one thing left to do. You know what time it is, people. 
Hey, bueno, that is killer. The combination of the ground beef and the sausage makes for a nice mild flavor. It doesn't grab you and bite you. It's just enough really, really combination. Yeah, I think that just sausage would be a little bit too flavorful. Now, if you wanted to use some chorizo in here, that would be killer too. But I'll tell you what, Fiesta shotgun shells are the way to go for Cinco de Mayo. Man, are they good. That Rotel, the flavor shines through beautifully. So give us the thumbs up on the video if you like what you saw here. We work hard at these things. We'd like to know that you're enjoying them, okay? Next thing, leave us a comment. Always feel free to leave us a comment. Anything, I promise we will answer. That's all I've got for this week. Remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron, 